Today we're taking a look at 151 singles and sealed product. Uh, we have a little bit of uh, some stuff happening, just a little. We're gonna talk about it as you guys can see on this chart here. Um, you're gonna see a common trend, uh, at least for the singles mostly. Um, and it, we're gonna look at the Charizard first because this is the big dog that took obviously this huge run from like the 120s up to over $200. It's kind of come back down a little bit, uh, 185 ish. Um, so we'll see where this like new low ends up. That doesn't mean that this card uh, can't, you know, go on another vertical run. Uh, but usually when they have explosive growth, they need some time to cool off. Um, that's usually what happens. Not always, but so this card could continue to run. But uh, we're seeing last solds pretty consistently at that 185 mark. 185 is all here. 186. And then we have a 130, 184. 185 so uh, it seems like the market is kind of like whoa we're gonna cool off with this card and we're gonna 185 is a, a good value for it there's 103 listed um, there was not that many listed when this started to run so uh, a lot more are on the market now a lot of times what happens is people go holy crap that card's worth that much they, they may not keep up with the prices and they go oh, I have one of those I'll sell it um, and then the cards come in right um, so that's probably what's driving the price down right now a lot of people are selling and they go oh well he's selling for 190 I'll sell for 185 or whatever and the battle of the undercutting happens we say this all the time in lots of markets but um i'm not saying that's for sure what's happening but it it's something that tends to happen now the blastoise and the venusaur i talked about i was like well why aren't the when the charizard was running i was like i want to see the blastoise and the venusaur run you would think same rarity uh same difficulty to pull and they did the blastoise went up to about 77 it's come down a little bit but it looks like it's it's coming up 48% growth uh, in the past three months, 31%. When you, when we zoom in on the, the one month, you can see a little bit better of what's happening. Uh, still 31% growth, but it came, it came down, came back up, came back down. It's kind of in this little channel, like the $70 range. Um, so it'll be interesting to see same thing. Like what happens if this will continue, if this will, you know kind of fall down a little or if it'll stabilize and then get ready for another run uh last holds we're seeing 44 70 83 43 65 64 so it's kind of all over the place on the blast voice not as consistent as the charizard so this might bounce around a little bit before it finds its market value uh 93 currently on tcg player then we have the venusaur that got a run up as well uh, 70 percent up on the three month chart looking real good 45 percent in the past month it ran from in the past month from just below 50 up to almost 80 and then it's kind of tapering down a little uh, last solds 70 i don't know what this one is this one i don't know if that's japanese but we'll, we'll include it 70 43 72 81 65 64 so it looks like this might be coming to high 60s we'll see and maybe that's where it'll level out um, but yeah, so these cards cooling off a little bit, and this is going to be kind of, I mean, this card's not the same either, but the Charizard EX up 20%, it was at $41, it came down just a little bit, uh, we'll go to the one month, one month's up 10%, um, last solds we're seeing 50, 40, 34, 40, 40, so yeah, that's about accurate, um, this one didn't, if we zoom out here, let's see. So this uh, actually, yeah, this card was, it just came off its its one year high as well. Um, so a little similar, but the chart's looking a little different on this one. Um, then we have the Alakazam uh, up only 11%, only ran up to $37. And it's kind of still at that point. On the one month chart, 21% growth, super solid from 30 up to 37. However, this one looks like this one could be bucking the trend and this one could be undervalued and it's kind of on its way up uh, at least a little from 37 to we're seeing 42 42 38 but then a 33 42 sales so alakazam might be coming up once again it's an sir cool art could be undervalued at this price so this one could be coming up into that 40 dollars range uh, we'll see where it settles then we have the bulbasaur uh 46 percent growth some of these numbers are wild every time i read them um on the three-month chart on the one month it's up 17 percent so it went up to 34 35 came back down to 34 up to 35 again uh last solds though these have to be japanese i don't know 
they got their own section on TCG player and they're not using it. Anyways, last solds we're seeing two at 44, which is kind of interesting. And then 30, 30, 30, and 40. So this one's kind of a little bit all over the place. 150 currently listed on TCG. We'll have to keep an eye out for this one. Uh, then we got the Squirtle. Squirtle ran all the way up to 36. It's come down a little uh, into the low 30s. However, most recent sales, 30, 42, 40, 32, 35, 30. So once again, kind of like 30, 40, 30, 40, like can't really decide. Kind of a big range. In the past month, it's actually down. Uh, 4.65%. So uh, if we zoom out to the one year, let's see. Yeah, so similar to a lot of the other cards coming off a one year high, right? So even if it ends down at around $30, that's still much higher than it was, you know, last year in the 20s. So just another another card to keep an eye on. We're just getting a, a feel for the set. We got some sealed product uh, coming towards the end of the video. Also, super random side note, uh, I ordered a new microphone, so audio quality should be much better moving forward. Uh, I should be in within the next few days. Anyways, um, up 15% the Charmeleon is uh, on the three month chart. Once again, kind of coming off of a little bit of a high here, 32 down to 31. One month's looking like 22% gain. Last solds are 30, 31, 40, 35, 40. For the Charmeleon, we'll zoom out. Came off a one-year high. A lot of these cards are. Uh, Zapdos at $52, which is nice to see. Uh, I still think this is extremely undervalued, in my opinion. If some of the other cards are doing what they're doing, I think the Zapdos should move. Um, there's 104 uh, currently listed on TCG Player. So it's a decent amount of cards to eat through for this card to run. 30% in the past month alone. We zoom out to the one-year coming off a one-year high uh so yeah came down just a little last solds though are mostly high but we have a 43 then a 59 59 59 45 so if this card ran up to about that 60 dollar value that would be a lot better for this card i'd like to see it in that range just because i love this card i love the artwork i love everything about it um we got our last single here so i think did we do one two three four five okay so these are the top 10 cards this is the 10th card uh, top 10 value wise and the Charmander you're similar pretty similar to the other ones almost 40% up uh, it was at $46 one month chart it's actually still up a little uh, 7% zoom out to the one year came off a one year high so a lot of these cards are coming off a one year high 41 last sold 42 52 40 42 for the Charmander so um, why are these cards falling off now well, like I said before earlier in the video, a lot of new sellers might be listing more cards. You know, maybe they did, they not everybody keeps up to date with the market, with the values. So a lot of people are like, oh crap, I have a few of those Charmanders. I'll sell them or whatever. You know. Um, plus the other thing that uh, could be happening, and uh, there's um, we're gonna take a look at some sealed here, is with surging sparks coming out. There's a lot of hype between about surging sparks the booster box prices are already going really high so um and i've used this analogy before and i'll say it again the carousel analogy i like you know you watch you watch somebody on the carousel you can only watch it until once they go out of view behind the carousel you're gonna see the next thing so um sometimes this happens where you know oh 151 was getting really high uh, I'm not saying that this is like everybody doing this, but I'm sure some people are. 151, oh, that's unobtainable anymore. It goes around the corner. Oh, here comes Surging Sparks, right? And then, oh, Surging Sparks is going to get really high. And then what's the next thing, right? Um, so I do like to use that analogy because I do think it's apl applicable in in maybe not all cases, but in a lot of cases. Um, and we're going to see that continue to play out. That's kind of what the market does. There's a lot of money coming into the market right now as well. Um but UPCs, sealed UPCs, uh, almost $200. These are up 57% in the past three months, 30% in the past month. Zoom out to the one year, coming off a one year high. Now these barely retraced, barely came down off of that $200 mark, right? They're, they're down to like 195, but last solds we're seeing 197, 196 for the UPCs. And these were available all day long at Costco, other distributors for 80, 90 bucks for a long time. So yeah, the, the demand for 151 is massive. Um, 
the booster bundle, so the displays are actually up uh, 16% in the past three months. They were all in this range. They were in the 440s. Now they're almost $100 up in the 540s. One month, one month chart, 22% gain. So this is a really solid gain. Um, I do like this product a lot. The booster bundle displays sealed. I think will do really well long term. I really like them. Um, coming off a one year high. So it, it's come off of a one year just a little bit. 550 down to 540. There's only 29 of these available on TCG Player. However, the last sold was 560. But then before that, we have 540 and 555, 560. So uh, maybe this is a, on another little bit of an uptick. We'll have to see uh, what happens with the with the bundle displays. Then we have Pokemon Center ETB, obviously extremely popular. Um, this is like sort of leveling out, it looks like, 71% up on the three month chart, which, geez, just every time I see these numbers, it always just is like, phew, the 151 boom is real. Um, so 71% up, but it's it kind of like hit that 220 mark and went 223, 225, 226, 227. So, growth but slow growth maybe leveling out right once again these are pricing some people out these are unobtainable not everybody can afford to pay 220 for an etb but well, this is the pokemon center one so obviously more expensive we'll look at the regular etb in a minute um but last sold's pretty consistent 228 229 228 230 230 230 225 so fairly consistent um leveling out ish is what i would call it ish so um might be nice for people to see. I don't know. I don't really know who's buying these at this price. For me, I, I'm not like I'm not looking to to pick these up at 225 personally. If you have to have one for your collection, uh, maybe this might be a good time. I mean, I don't know. But yeah, Pokemon Center ETBs. Uh, the regular ETBs are kind of doing a little bit more of what some of the singles are doing and some of the other stuff. Kind of just breathing for a second right um 42 percent up in the past three months 12 percent in the past month alone zoom out to the one year coming off of a one year high one year high of 97 went back down to 92 and 95 uh recently so just relaxing for a minute the regular etbs um last sold 92 95 96 96 96 for the regular pokemon center etbs we'll take a look at three more products um before i give you my like concluding thoughts now this was i thought was a little interesting um not not that not that it couldn't go up but just some some g decent gains i feel like the booster bundles kind of were stagnant for a little bit it felt like um but 31 percent up in the past three months with 36 percent growth in the past month so that's pretty wild for booster bundles six packs uh anyways 58 dollars. that's pretty much the market price it's kind of holding there 347 available on TCG player last solds 58 58 58 58 54 58 58 so very the 58 is where that's the limit right um so we'll see where these booster bundles end up but 36 percent growth in the past month is really good zoom out to the one year it's at it's one year high it's pretty much just that 58 and it's like kind of stopped there um something that i always find the most interesting and you see this on a lot of charts. Most of the sales, like look where most of these sales came. 500 items sold in this in these few days. And then almost 500 in these few days. Most of the sales are coming when the price is going up. So something I want to talk to you guys about is believing when you identify that a set is strong. When you identify maybe that a card is strong, but more with sets, like, you know, when 151 is good, uh, maybe if you believe, um, if you believe in Twilight Masquerade or whatever set that, that you believe in, um, believe in it and know that like, oh, these, these are good cards. This will do well because look at all these sales. You could have been buying in here at 32 at MSRP in some places below MSRP for a while. So it's just have that when you know that something is good you don't have to only buy into the strength buy into the fomoing um and i'm super guilty of doing that myself i've done that many times where i go oh i know that i think that this is going to be really good and then oh but the price but it's not very expensive right now so then you kind of like back off of it and then it starts to run and then you're buying more 
like at or above MSRP, depending on what it is, right? We all do that. But um, that's just some some of my advice. Um, 151. Uh, sorry, 151. Of course, we're, we're only talking about 151. What am I doing? Uh, binder collection, sorry. 56% growth in the past three months. Uh, it looks like it's kind of chilling at this, at this high right here. 45% uh, growth in the past month alone. That's really big growth for one month. Um, but yeah, one year high. Uh, looks like it's, I don't know. I don't know if it's leveling out right now. Um, looks like it's coming up a little bit more. We got a weird last sold at 35. We're going to ignore that. I don't know what it is. Um, I'm assuming it's like just a binder or something. But very consistent last solds. 77, 77, 77. All the way down here to 62. So 77s across the board, which would bring this market price up even further. The one year charts wild, 153% gains. Could add this for 29 bucks. It's selling really high. Um, so yeah, that's that's a product that's doing really well. Um, then I wanted to just talk about just booster packs, just loose packs. There are at around eight bucks. There's a lot of them available, 1800 uh, on TCG player. 12% growth in the past three months with 13% coming in the past month alone, but kind of a similar thing that we're seeing. It hit its high and it's kind of coming off. It's cooling off, coming off of it, whatever you want to call it. Um, kind of the common theme is that some of these, they're, whatever their one year highs are, they're down a little bit from that. Kind of around the board, singles, sealed, that's what we're seeing for, for 151 currently. That doesn't mean that these singles, these products can't continue to go on a run, um, but I kind of gave you some of the reasons why they could be stalling out a little bit. And it's just, it's an interesting time. So that's why I'm making this video. I just wanted to give people an update. Um, we do have the, uh, the new collection box coming in February that we talked about. Um, I wanted to pose just a question to you guys about that. A lot of, I got a lot of comments saying that um, the collection box is not a reprint. Well, I, I understand that it's a new product. My question to you guys is, do you think that the packs that are going into that collection have been sitting since the initial print run? Or do you think that they have printed new cards and new pack, made new packs? Um, we've been getting a lot of restocks. We're getting mini tins right now at Costco. We've been getting so much stuff, tons of booster bundles, um, uh, Zapdos and Alakazam boxes everywhere. Um, not everywhere, but uh, at big box retailers, right? Do you guys think that all of this is left over from the first print run? Or do you think that they have printed more? I kind of think that they've been printing, we've been, they've been printing more for a while. And I think just because they don't always announce, they don't shoot out an email being like, we're the Pokemon company, we're reprinting a set. They don't ever do that, right? We get the word from distributors, but the distributors are different from the big box retailers where they get, the, anyways, we don't need to go into all that, but that was just my question to you guys is, do you really think that it is from the first print run? Let me know if you do, if you guys, nothing wrong if you guys think that, but I just, I just think it's, it, it's a little hard to believe first print run packs are going into a new collection box, like this long after it, it, I don't know. It just isn't. Anyways, I'm excited for that collection box. I'm hoping to pick some up at or below MSRP, probably at with how popular the set's been. I don't know if it's going to go below that. I don't know when pre-orders are going to happen for that. If whatever, if we can, it might be going to, might be going to Costco only, but I will let you guys know. I'll make a video. I'll talk about that when we have more information. Um, but that is going to do it for this one. If you guys are 19 minutes into this video and you're not already subscribed, obviously you enjoyed the content. So do yourself a favor, hit the subscribe button. I do daily Pokemon collecting and investing content. If you guys don't want to really check the market, just watch my videos. I'll update you on what's hot, right? What's moving. Um, kind of talk about like just upcoming sets. I do set news, like new cards coming out, new sets, um, surging sparks coming out. What like, and just over a week. Um, so very interest, uh, interesting there can't wait to get my cases uh, open some packs so i'm excited for that but that is going to do it for this one guys i'll catch you in the next one and remember it was never a phase